Welcome back everybody, Clint here with Classic Firearms coming at y'all today with another manufacturer review, this time out of Switzerland based Bruger and Tomet, otherwise known as simply just BNT. Uh, started about 1991 making firearms accessories including silencers and rails and other tactical things like that for the European market and we've got here first off to talk about a pistol, yes this is a pistol, the APC-223, APC standing for the Advanced Police Carbine, 223 chambering obviously, and uh, before we go much further you might be asking yourself what makes this a pistol? It has at least a 16 inch barrel on it, a rifle length barrel. It looks like a rifle, but due to silly gun laws, importation tax stuff like that, they found it easier just to import this as a pistol. And yes, this is a SB Tactical stabilizing brace. Before we go any further on that subject, let's talk about braces for a second, because right now the ATF has opened up the comment period, which is good for about another 80 days. I think it ends early September. Uh, to comment on, well, they pretty much want to hear from the public's opinion, right? They want to hear from all of us, me, you, everybody at home, thoughts and opinions about them pretty much trying to reclassify what braces are. Originally, pistol braces started off as items to assist wounded veterans with shooting. And now it seems like, well, hey, if you're handicapped in any type of way, it's pretty much going to be an NFA item for you to be able to shoot comfortably. Doesn't make sense to me. Also too, it's a brace. It's not a stock. Does it look like one? Sure, but looks and functionality are two different things, right? So with all that being said, make sure that you are taking advantage of this comment period and commenting on what the ATF is trying to do here because actually they do listen and read these comments. Stay respectful and just Google ATF pistol brace. The link will come up. Don't want to talk any more about that right now because that's not what this video is about. It's about BNT. So like I said, BNT being around for about 30 years now out of Switzerland has just recently won the United States Army contract with their APC-9, which we'll show you guys here in just a moment. I want to talk a little bit more about this guy as it is the rifle variation of this. 223 variation, I should say, because like I said, technically it's a pistol. I do like the fact that it does have this M lock rail on it. It is uh, free floated, which is very cool. It kind of reminds me of like LWRCI's mono forge barrel or upper receiver. It's not exactly monolithic because you can still remove the rail. It's two separate pieces, but you can see, or at least I can make out pretty easily here, the upper receiver integrating into the rail. So if you wanted to take the rail off, you can. And it is also a short stroke piston system. So if you wanted to remove the entire buffer system back here completely, I do also like to what they've done with this platform, or I should say system, is they've made it completely ambidextrous. I like that. Even the charging handle, you can actually simply lock into what they call like this little service hole right back here. You can lock that back, pretty much separate the lower and it'll allow you just to pull that right out, throw it on the other side and then you can get your AK action if that's what you prefer. Again, ambi controls are nice. Mag release here, mag release here, bolt release here, bolt release here. Cool. And also ambi safety. What I don't like about it is, yeah, it's a little heavy, but sometimes I equate, equate weight with reliability, personally, but also the controls are less than perfect on the APC line of firearms, and I saw that to be true with the APC-9 as well when we were running that with our giveaway. It's easy enough if you're working with a loaded magazine, but nine times out of ten I'm playing with an unloaded magazine, and I noticed that the bolt release on this guy is a little <sighs> stiff. There we go. If I use both thumbs on each side of the bolt release, I can get it. So yeah, a little stiff, take the magazine out, a lot better, but again, I just something that just kind of bothers me. Now, of course, there's a simple fix to this. Most likely, if I just go out and shoot it a lot, it'll start to break in and feel a little bit better, and it's also brand new, right out the box. I haven't really done much anything with it. Small complaint. Not really anything a big deal there. Other than that, this firearm feels great. I do like the slim grip on it. This is actually the grip that it comes with. You can replace the grip on this APC-223 with any other type of AR-style grip. 
sweet. I like what they've done there. Now, other than the APC line, which you'll see here uh, in just a moment, the APC-9, they also make their advanced precision rifle line, like the APR-308 and 338, which are their sniper systems that are utilized heavily throughout Europe as well. Very cool looking firearms, and I really want to get my hands on one of those and let her rip. But before we show off the APC-9, I want to talk about something that's got a pretty funny name. The GHM-9, otherwise known as the Grasshopper Mouse. And I am not kidding. Let's explain why it's called the Grasshopper Mouse. The GHM-9. Now this one right here is the compact model, and it's a pretty cool gun. Now you might be wondering, what the heck is a Grasshopper Mouse? Now believe it or not, Grasshopper Mouse is an actual animal that's found common in the Southwest US. And one of its, one of its diets is actually, or one of the food it's known to eat is actually a scorpion. So you can only imagine what they're trying to get at there. If it's eating scorpions for breakfast, <laughs> I think that's just, a, I think it's a not so subtle jab at CZ personally. I don't know, let me know what you guys think. Do you think this is all just coincidence? <laughs> right, but I will say this, this is a pretty cool little pistol. Granted, it's not the cheapest thing out there. It's does beat the scorpion in that aspect. If you were to buy one of these bone stock versus a CZ scorpion, you're gonna be paying a lot more for this guy. Is it worth the extra money? I don't know. I haven't made up my mind just yet. Personally, I have a CZ scorpion and I love shooting the thing, especially with the Franklin Armory binary trigger that I've got in that guy. It's awesome. This one, I don't have as many rounds on just yet and I can't really speak to that. So. The debate on that one is still to be determined. If you'd like to see maybe a video of the GH9, GHM9 versus the CZ Scorpion, that actually sounds like it would be pretty fun. So let me know down in the comments if you would like to see that. And speaking of liking things, make sure you're going ahead and liking this video as well because anytime you like a video, post a comment, even if it's a negative comment, whatever, uh, you're just helping our al algorithms out. Same thing for every other gun, gun tuber out there. Make sure you're subscribing and liking because the more you do that, the more you're telling anti-gun YouTube to go somewhere and do something, all right? So if you haven't already liked this video, go ahead and give it a like, we appreciate it. Now with all that being said, I really love the style of this pistol. This is one of the more affordable options of B&T's line and it's pretty sweet with everything it comes with right out the box. One thing I do think is actually pretty neat or unique, I should say, are the polymer flip-up sights that it comes with. Sure, it looks like just regular little flip-up sights, but if you wanted to stow this guy or store it in this right here with your sights down, it actually has an integrated rear and front sight when they're in the closed or collapsed position. It might be a little difficult to pick up on camera, but you can see the two little notches right here for the rear sight and just your simple front sight post right up here. So if you wanted to go real slim with it, you can. And I think that's actually something that's just kind of cool. Again, the charging handle on this guy is ambidextrous. Take this guy out, put it on the other side. Very easy to disassemble and maintain. Just be careful. <laughs> Find out kind of like I did. Good thing nobody was uh, down range here because I did want to swap out the charging handle to the left hand side. I think I prefer that instead of the right hand side on this type of system. And it's two takedown pins here, really easy. You got this takedown pin here that allows the lower to swing free, and then a second takedown pin that allows the back plate to drop down and then remove the entire spring, bolt, all that type of assembly. This is under spring tension, and it kind of went flying. Mistakes were made, I've learned. Things are cool now. Anyway, ambi controls other than that, yes, ambi safety still. You also have the ambi mag release still, and also a easier to use ambi bolt release. I prefer this one on the more affordable line that BNT has to offer over the APC line, which is a little, little bit more pricey, all right? So this is a direct blowback system in this guy still, and which of course helps cut down on the cost, but the bolt release system on this, instead of pushing down on the little tab like you see here on the APC, or maybe I'm just pushing in a weird way, it's definitely not in, it's down and it takes a little bit of force, this one you press in and it has a little bit more of a slim profile that hugs the body more so it doesn't protrude as much, which I like quite a bit. But anyway, just to show you guys, it's a little bit easier to, a little bit easier to use. 
Okay, so that one's still stiff. On this side, much easier. <laughs> so I don't know what's up with B&T and their bolt releases, but they stiff, so. Like I said, if you wanna see the grasshopper mouse square off to the CZ Scorpion, let me know down in the comments. Now let's go ahead and bring up the Army contract winner here. And it also happens to be our current giveaway, minus my Gym Tech Suppressor. This is mine, it's not going home with one of you guys, but it sure does look sweet. What we have here is the APC-9 Compact, or the APC-9K Pro. The difference between the Pro and the original APC-9 is this now has a non-reciprocating charging handle. Thank you. And you also have just overall a little bit better controls, and now you have, instead of like what you have on the GHM, which is a non-removable uh, grip here. It's just all integrated to the lower. You can now switch out the grip on this guy for, again, standard AR style grips. Cool, like that. We also threw on the SV Tactical side folding brace. Remember what I said about the ATF opening their comments earlier? Don't forget to do that. It's just a brace. And we also decided to throw on the Aimpoint Acro. This thing is a sweet little red dot with the ScholarWorks mount. Overall, very cool. Now, right out of the box with this guy here, again, everything that you saw on the APC-223, ambi controls, right, cool, you got that. Again, the same type of polymer flip-up sights, which is a great, great tool for this situation. So that way, if your red dot fails, batteries die, whatever, the way the scalar works mount is, you can tell it's hollow all the way through. I can still very easily utilize my not-so-precise <laughs> backup rear sights if I wanted to keep these folded or something, if I needed to get it up quick and I didn't have time to push buttons or anything. Thing. So pretty neat little display. Picatinny going all the way around here, but it is M-Lock with the Picatinny uh, inserts. So if you wanted to throw on whatever you want, you can. If you wanted to remove these and keep it a little bit more slim, completely up to you guys, you can do that. So very cool. But the APC-9, like I said, this is now the Army Contract submachine gun. The one that's actually full auto and fun. Not saying this isn't fun, but you know, full auto. So what are you gonna do? But anyway, the Army awarded BNT the APC-9 submachine gun contract for their personal defense security detail. So pretty cool stuff. And it's pretty much the first submachine gun that we've seen in the United States Army since the Thompson. So pretty wild, or I guess you could even say the grease gun. But uh, overall, pretty cool. And in fact, when I think grease gun, I think like a Swiss made modern almost just by noticing how much of the tail end here is kind of hanging off just kind of look like that to me i really like the looks of this gun though all of these all in all bnt has made some pretty cool stuff again the apc9 i get it's, it's a neat gun and for it to be like the first gun since the grease gun tommy gun in the united states army now is pretty cool all in all, very cool. And other cool things, yes, you can actually switch out the lower receiver on it to take the 320 mags, the Glock mags, or the standard 30 round mags by BNT that you see on here, which is all, again, very cool. I also like what they did with the charging handle here. It is ambi because, well, it's on both sides. So there you go. And it flips away, so it's nice and tucked. And again, just a really compact firearm. Nice. Now they also make something pretty neat called the TP9, which if you guys wanted to see a cool little sub gun, suppressed everything, check those out. They're pretty nice. From my understanding, the Lucas at T-Rex Arms isn't a big fan, but I'd like to hear from you guys down in the comment section. What do y'all think? Me personally, I don't have any experience with it, so I can't give my opinion. Uh, they also make the Station 6. We talked about that in a video not too long ago where it looks like it's pretty much, well, it's not it looks like. It is the modern creation of the Wellrod pistol that was made famous back in World War II. Pretty much the ultimate quiet, quiet pistol, single shot, very quiet. So check that thing out. Now, if you are the winner of this guy here, you can do like what Michael did, who was the winner of our first SMG 45 giveaway and SBR this guy, because there is actually a telescoping stock adapter for this that allows you to put on M4 type stocks and all, and it looks very cool. So check that out, all right? But ultimately this thing, it's neat. I like it a lot. I've enjoyed my time with it so far, and I think it's a cool gun. I just need to shoot it more to loosen up some of the controls, or at least the winner does. So head on over to ClassicFirearms.com to get your entries in on the APC-9K Pro. Don't miss out. And uh, code word for this guy, it's real easy. Pro. P 
P-R-O. I think you guys can figure that one out out for pretty, pretty easily, all right? So don't miss out on that. I'll see you guys down in the comment section below all about BNT. What's your favorite BNT that maybe you'd like to see on the channel here if I can get my hands on one and we'll do another little review. Don't forget also too to let me know if you'd like to see the grasshopper mouse try to eat the scorpion. Yeah, we'll see. And uh, I think that'll be a lot of fun. Again, get your comments in on the brace while the period is open. I'll leave it off there. As always, we appreciate you and your business. God bless. And we'll see you next time at classicfirearms.com.